<clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pinto, for your thought-provoking lecture. I remained with a, a number of question, definite, questions, definitely, and perhaps we'll have the time later. Of course, after our respondent will have his word. Um, uh, and indeed, uh, the respondent is uh, Dr. Dov Maimon. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Dov Maimon has a number of uh, fields and uh, fields of interest. Um, he has a title from the Technion and uh, another from France. And he studied religious anthropology, Islamic and medieval studies, literature, human sciences. And when he finished all this, he went to a computer department, to be a computer department manager of Tahal, of the Israeli National Water Master Plan, um, and then in a, dealt with water in another place, but in other places it's less holy. There's an, not holy water. Uh, and he's director of a Jewish Muslim, the Jewish Muslim department at Yesodot, a center for the study of Torah and, Demo Torah and democracy. So, um, well, he could speak to us about many many an issue, but we asked him to be a respondent to the lecture we have uh, just heard, uh, since he is really active in Jewish-Muslim relations in France, um, in the French Jewish community, uh, and I'm sure that you have a lot to say, so please, we welcome you. Thank you for coming from Jerusalem. Today's, Ju today's Jerusalem day, it wasn't easy to to slap down. Ah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Professor Dina Porat, dear Diana, good afternoon. Um, Diana has told us that there is maybe not such a thing as a Jewish European identity. What I want to, 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 to say today is that the Jews of Europe are facing common challenges, and that makes them a collective, even if they don't choose it in some way. So you didn't mention that I'm a senior fellow at the Jewish People Policy Institute, which is a, a, a central think tank regarding the future of Jewish people, and I, I just mentioned it's my main job, and it's important. Okay, so regarding uh, the future of, of European Jewry, this subject is rarely discussed, in fact, in international settings. And I want to thank the Counter Center for, to convene this event, because, in fact, the Counter Center is one of very few spaces where this debate is held in Israel regarding the future of European Jewry. And the reason this debate is not held is not an accident. In fact, most Jewish leaders in Israel and in North America are not optimistic about thriving Jewish communities in Europe. Europe is confronted with difficult social, demographic, political, economical challenges, and in fact, the future of the European Jewry will depend essentially on the future of Europe. This is a key point, and I invite you to distribute, the, the, uh, you distribute it. You will see that, in fact, if we want to understand what will happen with European Jews, we have to understand what will happen with Europe. And the crisis, I'm really relating exactly to Diana, what Diana said now, the crisis of identity of the European Jews is close to the crisis of identity of Europe. You know, if you want to position yourself in a country, you have to understand what country you are living in. If you don't know where this country, what the country values, what the country is going to, if, you, if this country has no vision, and Europe has no real vision about what they will go, and they want to be, if they want to be a more national states, or they want to be post-national states, if they want to have integration, political integration, social integration, economical integration, they don't know exactly where they want to be, it's very difficult for the Jews to position themselves inside the, the future of Europe. So they are very connected. And that's the reason, it's one of the main reasons what, if we want to study what will happen with the Jews in Europe, we have to study what will happen with Europe itself. 
So it's about what we are going to do now. And, uh, and the, the big problem we have with your, your Jews in Europe because is the thing that they have no control about this megatrends. They have no control what will happen with Europe. They have, it's not a point of intervention for them. They cannot choose. They cannot, uh, they cannot intervene so much. What they can do for the best, is, I suggest the Scanter Center to do that, is to build scenarios and to follow the development to prepare possible organized reaction. And unfortunately, as Diana has mentioned, the Jewish capabilities of uh, pan-European institution, Jewish institution are very weak. And they are only emerging now. And even at the national level in France, Belgium, Brit Britain, Germany, Hungary, and so on, the organizational structures are weak, underfunded, not coordinated, and in a world not adapted to the new development. So Europe is facing major challenges, major problems, major, uh, uh, major crisis. It could be economical, it could be social, it could be migration, it could be demographic. And uh, the Jews are not so much organized to, to, do, to deal with that. So we have no big problem. We'll see now. We have problem with Shrita, with ritual slaughtering. We have problem with Brit Mila. We have problem with immigration. We have problem with Islam. And the Jews don't, know, don't have a voice. They don't have a voice because they are not organized, because they don't, want, they don't know what they want to say to European countries. And they don't know how also how to work with European Union. Why they don't know to work with European Union? I just telling you more later, but you have to understand the, what the way the use have been to work in different countries is to have personal relationship with a leader, with a political leader, top level political leaders, with the president, with the king. It's all the time. Yeah? We call it Yehudi Hatzer. And it was the ways use, Jews have been used to work. But today in Europe, in Brussels, it's not working this way. We have bureaucrats. And with bureaucrats, we have to work according to profession. You have to give them report. And if you don't have a right report, if you don't know how to legal program to present them, they will not listen to you. And you can speak to Sarkozy, and you can speak to Tony Blair, and to that, and to that. It doesn't help, because these people have no voice there. They have a voice, but they cannot avoid what will happen, because we have professional bureaucrats, and you have to speak with personal, and this is right at Brussels, it's also right at the local level, I mean the national level. It's very important to understand why we have a crisis, and the, the Jews are, re, are not really uh, ready today to confront with these challenges. We have also other problems, as Diana says, because, you know, in every country in the world, the Jews are at a, the, the Jewish structure is always a mirror of a national structure. You have to understand, in America, we have a federal state, federation, and the Jewish organization are federation. It's not a mistake, it just, it's because it has to work this way. When you are in England, the board of deputies is because we have a board of deputies in England, not only for the Jews. And in France, we have the president of the CRIF. And why? Because we have a president, statism. So it's not, it's not a mistake. In every country, when you want, uh, it's, it's right, it's, it's okay at the level of the state, it's, lock, it's, red, it's also at the level of a city, at the, with a mayor of a city. If you want to work with him, we have to have somebody exactly according to the same organization. He has somebody in charge of education, you have to have at the Jewish level someone in charge of education. If he has a, a minister of culture, you have to have somebody with culture. We have to work exactly according to the same structure. And in Europe, if you want to speak to Brussels, you have to have a 27 uh, organization of Jews who are coordinated with them without the outsider actors. And in some ways, and these people have to act according to exactly the same structure. So you don't have the same structure, you will not be able to, to react uh, professionally with these people. So it's not a problem of person, it's a problem of structure. And structure is the way to change the things. And we know it from the state of Israel, which is a big change in structure who made the, the change of, in history of the Jewish people. So what I would like to say now, it's uh, what the most American and Israeli leaders think about the future of Europe is that the Jews in Europe are going to assimilate. And they just, and, and the, only the most vibrant and committed Jews 
will, as, will relocate in Israel or in America. And as a global Jewish perspective, this scenario is not a catastrophe. Along history, Jews have been used to follow business and career opportunities, and the Israeli-American Jews will gain from this shift. I mean, the Jews will leave Europe and they go to communities in New York or in, in Tel Aviv or in Jerusalem. It will be okay for the, at the global level, or, or to Beijing for sure. And it's not a problem for, for the Jewish people. It's just a shift. It's, it's a shift that started some 150 years ago. And it continues. And we have more and more big communities in Beijing, in China. We have closed this year five synagogues in Paris. And we have opened five synagogues in China. It's not the same people, but we have to understand this is a shift. The migration going, we follow the money. It's very simple. Yeah? It's, it has to be this way. So most of the people in Israel and in America do not believe in Europe and Jewish, so they are not going to, to invest money to in that. So why we do, should we bother? Why we should be concerned at all? Why we should gather together today and speak about the, our future? I will tell you why. The first thing is because is indeed the small communities lacking critical mass, as they do, will disappear. The largest French, British, and German communities are here to stay. We certainly observe anti-Jewish discourse and violent action, but state anti-Semitism is not conceivable in Europe. It will not happen at, unless we have catastrophe and it will be not Europe anymore. But we don't expect any state anti-Semitism. So there is not a risk for the Jews regarding anti-Semitism. We can have some violence for people who, who can be recognized as Jews, but we, we, we cannot expect that there is a risk for the Jews. And, and benefiting from relatively high social, professional, and economic individual status, the European Jews will in all likelihood remain in Europe. So the Jews will remain in Europe. We have one, hundred, one million and a half Jews in Europe and we will stay in Europe. They will not emigrate to any place because at the individual level they are very good there. They are better off. There is no risk for anti-Semitism. There is no risk for economy. So at least we have a problem with uh, uh, economical crisis in Europe. The Jews will remain there. And, and it's also very difficult to migrate, to migrate, so people do not migrate so easily. When you're a doctor, when you're an advocate, you're not going to, to start to another place unless you are really bad in your place. So people are not going to move, so they will stay there. So what will happen? The question is that not if as individuals and national citizens will remain in Europe, because they will, but whether or not they will continue to identify, to identify as Jews and they will be able to make their voice heard as a collective. Concretely, the question is, what will be the implication of a new trans, the trans that I show you in this, in, in this report, which is part of my report called uh, European Jew in 2030, published by, by, the Jewish, by JPPI. So, so this, you see the men, six trans, that are shaping Europe, and you will see what the implication for the Jews. So what we can see here is what could be the answer to that, what the Jews could do to position themselves in the new ethos of Europe. This is the big question, and it's exactly what I would really like to, 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 to question. So I would like five or six easy questions and then, and then go on to a conclusion and to bring maybe to, to closer to what Diana says. So first thing, is Europe an opportunity for the Jew? Is Europe integration an opportunity for the Jew? I say certainly. Jews have suffered in the past from nationalism, racism, and xenophobia. So multicultural Europe should theoretically be a space where Jews could thrive be accepted as a minority among minorities. And this is one of the motives that people say, okay, it's good work to have Europe, it will be good for the Jews. In practice, it doesn't work for the moment. Jews have been used to develop, uh, okay. And, and the, it doesn't work, and as I told before, we have a different problem with, uh, with Shrita, with Brit Mila. It's going wrong and wrong. we're not able to, to confront that. We have no way. And you have to understand, what does it mean kosher food and, 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 and Shrita? Shrita in, in, in Switzerland today, it's not a part of EU, it's all, it costs 110 euro for one kilo of, uh, of, of meat. You understand, 550 shekels, yeah? It's because why? Because you have to take a coal from Switzerland to export it to France, to do shrita in France, and then to bring the food to Switzerland. It makes all the Jews there, or I mean all the eat, uh, kosher eaters, uh, clandestine and, uh, 
and uh, doing things were not correct and not, politic not uh, legal. They just break the food inside the car and they cross the border. So you understand what could happen in tomorrow, uh, today it's already in Holland and tomorrow it will be in Paris. We have no way to stop that because you don't have the organization at the global, at the European level to be able to, exp to, express, to express the people how to do it. I don't know if you know the problem with Shrita, but first it comes from the animal rights uh, uh, activist and no, it's not from the it's not from the left anymore. It's coming from the right, from the personal right to know about where the the meat is coming from. So and, and this is coming from the from the from the right people, not from the left. It's people who say the, the consumer right to know how you the, the meat that you buy at the supermarket is coming from the, the Jewish uh, uh, aggressive and uh, non-human way to to kill the the cow. And this problem, for example, is a big, big problem because 70% of all the meat, which is slaughtered according to Jewish law, is sold in the, in the non-Jewish system. Yeah? Because we have all the, you know, the don't part of the core we don't use, and then we have the nevela, so we have a, it is a problem. It will cost about the price I told you before if we don't do that. So, and people will not go, are going to boycott all this meat and will not be able to do that. So, simple thing like that could change the life of the Jews in Europe, even if it's not an identity problem. But the problem of this identity and this, and, and the reason it's changing is because of deep cultural movement that we have in Europe. So I come back to a few or four things clear, but I think Diana has said it regarding the first, first thing is multiculturalism. Is multiculturalism good for the Jews? So what we know about multiculturalism is that multicultural society get ethnic, my, ethnic and religious minority a grow up power according to their size. So in America and Canada, where Jews are a well organized and one of the largest minority, it helps them. But in Europe, when the Muslims are 10 times more numerous than Jews, multiculturalism strengthens the Muslims and relatively weakens the Jews. You understand? So it's, it's, not, it's a very big problem. It's not a protection of the individual anymore. It's a protection of a group. And the group is stronger, so the Jews are very bad, worse off because of multiculturalism in Europe. And this is the way the EU works. OK, what else? So regarding Europe, you have to understand the basic credo ethos of Europe, as Diana has written in one of the uh, of excellent uh, report, is regarding this idea, I will call it like uh, John Lennon, you remember John Lennon, imagine all the people, yeah? Yeah, John Lennon, yeah? So imagine all the people, imagine there are no nation, imagine no religion too, yeah? And you can think I'm a dreamer and so on. But so this is the thing, this is a basic feeling of European people. They say, if we get rid of ethnical, religious, national identity will have a world without war. And this is the basic. So they don't support war or religion, and they don't support ethnic groups. For they don't support, not because they are against Jews, they are just against religion. They don't like religion in Europe. They have a good reason why not to support religion, because they have a history, a lot of blood, war, because of religion. So these people don't, are not going to support a religion-based initiative. So I not support also a Jew, Jew, Jewish based initiative. And especially when you have so many Muslims, you are not going to support any religious based initiative. So this is a big problem for the Jews. And I, I, I can continue because you have a paper in front of you and you can see many of the big challenges. And I will go directly, I can go to Islam and to go in details because I'm an expert in Islam and especially in relation with the Islam and the Islam, Islamic actors in the world. I'm in charge of strategy of Jewish people toward Islam. And, uh, but I, I'm going that if you are interested later on. What I'm going to do is very simple. So is everything lost? Is there a future? So what should be done and what could be done? This is the question I'm asking you, and I will try to answer something. Listen. Is there no future for the one million and a half European Jews? I will say that our role as intellectuals is to develop a new model. This is the role of a counter center as I see it. Yeah? A new model, a new positioning that will be fit with the European vision and ethos. 
It's what in history of Jewish people, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai has done in Yavne, or like Ari Akadosh has done after the, the expulsion of Spain. This is when you have a big catastrophe, when you have a change of ethos, you have to change yourself to adapt yourself to the new things. So the, the old model of the Jews being an insular and a, a closed ghetto mentality is not working in Europe. It cannot work this way. We have to new, find a new positioning. And what could be this positioning? I will give you some, some, some way to, to start with that. And if we fail to, to do that, Jews will remain in Europe, as I said. The Haredi Jews, altogether something like 50,000. The Orthodox Jews, maybe also. And the ones who want to live in a mental ghetto, connected through internet to social Jewish network and Israeli newspapers, will keep Jewish altogether something like 200,000. But the huge majority who do not believe in God or do not express their Jewishness in a synagogue, I do not like to be in a ghetto. They want to be part of a large society, like in history, like the Paulus or, or St. Paul or Spinoza or Marx or Einstein or any real, many of the most important, prominent Jews we have in the world. They don't want to be in the ghetto. They want to be part of a larger society. So most of the people do not want to be in the ghetto. So I will go away from Judaism. And we are going to lose them if we don't find a way to accommodate between a general concern identity and a Jewish concern identity. So we have to find a new model. And this model has to be done. And um, what, could, what could be this Jewishness that will fit with the open European society of tomorrow? What are the Jewish expressions that can be heard outside of the insular Jewish society by both non-core community Jews and by European intellectuals, whatever they are Jews or non-Jews. In this context, Diana, I want, to, 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 I want you to listen carefully to Diana's perspective, because she is probably the one who has invested the most energy and reflection to explore the emerging European Jews' identity. The second reason I want you to take her perspective seriously is because Diana is one of the very few thinkers who writes about Jewish staff and whom the article are published by the leading European intellectual journals. Diana doesn't speak about anti-Semitism, nor about Israel delegitimation. She does not denounce again and again double standard and past crimes. People don't want to read such things. People want to read perspective about their deeper concerns and they do not like to read again and again about past crime. They didn't commit themselves. Diana is providing what they expect f the most from the Jews. They pr she provides them with a quality Jewish perspective about existential concern. This is a very key point of what I'm trying to tell you. I mean, what the people have a lot of expectation from the Jews. The Jews have a high symbolic role in Europe. It's a key point in Europe. If, if they protect so much the, the sites when the Jews have been, it's because it's a kind of compass. The Jews are a kind of compass. So the Jews are expected to say something about the ethical things. And if we are not able to do that, they are not going to listen to us. So we have to find a way to be, to say something which is not, she is uh, from a Jewish perspective, and the other side, which is something which is completely about their concern, not about our concern. And if we're not able to do that, they are not really going to listen to us. And I will see, look at the people like Jean-Claude Milner, about Schmuel Trigano, about all these people. They are not, no one to want to read them, no one to want to publish them. Why? I mean, in non-Jewish journals. Because they, they already know what is written in that. But it's not new for them. There is not new thing. What we need is to occupy, to be everywhere in the intellectual world, and to say something, uh, let's say, uh, pertinent, uh, relevant. We have to say something which is relevant to their existential needs. And we have to say it from a Jewish perspective. So this is something we can say. We have to be close to our own identity and to have something to say about it. So I, this is my conclusion. This is a central issue. Jews become demographically and electorally less and less significant in Europe. But on the other side, they have a central symbolic role. 
Jews will, respect, will be respected and appreciated in Europe if they will be able to deliver a Jewish perspective about European concern. As a pressure group, Jews have no weight. As a civilization, their voice is expected. This is true at the national level, at the European level. Whatever will be the future development regarding Europe integration or Europe disintegration, Jews will be demographically insignificant and their relative status will depend on their ability to deliver meaning and inspiring perspective. Thank you.